Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to make a DIY solar filter for the Seastar S50. And obviously I'm holding up the filter that comes with the unit when you buy it. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with this filter whatsoever. It's got a really nice yellow color to the images and really can't complain too much about it. But I'm familiar with using batter solar filter paper. And this is a special DIY um, paper that you can buy for creating solar filters. And I've used it quite successfully in the past to make filters for solar eclipses, for my telescope and my camera lenses. And I also use it then to take photographs of sunspots and transits, etc. So the parts that I'm going to use today are 3D printed parts. So if you have a 3D printer, uh, you can go onto Thingverse and you can find these files and print them off. Uh, credit to the gentleman that uh, designed this one. I don't think there's going to be any problems using it, but my son is an avid 3D printer and I kind of gave him um, a brief on exactly what I wanted. Um, specifically, I wanted the inner diameters to be a uh, diameter to be a little bit wider so that I have more room to glue the solar filter paper down to. Um, and I also wanted the ridges to be a bit tighter as well so that it sits a bit better into uh, the opening. Um, I just don't want it falling out. So I'd advise if you have a 3D printer, then print off the files and make sure that you're happy that it's going to, um, to fit properly. Um, obviously, you don't want to go gluing any solar filter paper onto um, the bottom part and then find out that it doesn't fit correctly. So um, a little bit of trial and error maybe is involved. So the next thing you need is the Astro Solar Filter Paper. And I purchased this from a shop in Ireland called KTech Telescopes. I uh, well packaged, uh, I'll leave a link uh, in the description. And this is the uh, film that I've always used. It's for visual and photo. And by visual and photo, what they mean is it is safe for solar observation at high magnification. And that's where you put the solar filter on the front part of the telescope. So the objective. And it's also safe for solar photography at high magnification, where you have the solar filter um, on the front of the lens of the camera. They show you some examples of the solar filters that you can make. And they also say that it's used in cell mounted batter solar filters. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be mounting it into our own cell and putting it in front of the, the lens of the Sea Star. They show you instructions on the back how to make your own objective solar filter. And also the all important safety warning you must read and understand that this filter paper is not to be used for naked eye solar observation and production of solar viewers, but only for front aperture filters covering long range optics. So in effect, what it's saying is, do not use the solar filter paper on its own. Don't make solar filter glasses out of it or don't use, uh, don't use it um, held up in front of the sun. It should only be used on the front of an optical device. So remember guys, safety first. All right, let's crack on. So once you remove the sheets from the protective plastic envelope, you will find that there are several sheets um, kind of stacked together. So the first one is just the cover um, that we had seen earlier. Inside then the top sheet will be the detailed instructions of how to build your own solar filter. And then on the back of that is the second part. The next piece of paper is the first cover that you will see covering the solar filter paper. And then behind that then is the solar filter paper itself and then a thin plastic sheet uh, to protect the backside. And then if I carefully remove this to the side, you will find the instructions for use and advise again to read the entire instructions and also all of the advice so you will follow the safety uh, guidelines but also it's very important to note that the astrofilm shouldn't be touched by your fingers 
because of the salt and urea that's in your fingers could break down the film and then also it's very important that the film itself is always kept as uh, stress-free as possible so you don't pull it tight across anything you always try to leave it as loose as possible and sometimes you'll find that on these diy solar filters you'll actually see they kind of wrinkle a bit now there's not there's no creases as such but that's completely fine you do not want this material to uh, stress in any way because that's going to reduce the optical quality of the paper itself okay so i'm going to begin by cutting out a template on just regular a4 printer paper um so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace uh, the outside diameter of the inner ring on the 3D printed part. And then I'm going to use that as um, a kind of dry fit template to see how well it fits into uh, the outer ring. Okay, so now I'm just going to see, does that fit in? And it does. It's a little tight, but that's okay. As I said, it's okay if the solar filter paper itself is a little bit um, wavy, but you don't want it crumpled. So it's a bit tight, so I'm gonna cut maybe another mill off the uh, outer diameter. Okay, so I've cut roughly a millimeter off the outside diameter and I can see that that is sitting in uh, quite nicely. Okay, so I'm happy with that and now I'm going to transfer the template onto the solar filter paper. That is done. So obviously you don't draw onto the solar filter paper itself. You would draw onto the protective sheet that's in front of it. You can use a sheet of A4 paper if you want to on top of that, but I've used just the regular paper that comes with it in the past and it's cut perfectly fine. So I'm now gonna cut out the shape and be careful then just to only grab it by the edges and we'll do a dry fit to see just how well it fits in. Okay, so that is cut out. And now what I'm going to do is put it into the outer ring of the 3D printed part uh, just to check and see the fit. I'm not going to remove the protective paper because I just want to ensure that it doesn't get scratched or marked. Okay, and there we have it. So it looks like it's a perfect fit. I'm now going to remove the bottom sheet from the solar filter paper and then I'm going to put some glue uh, around the inside of the, um, the lip. I've um, put some glue on the outside of the ring. Um, I didn't get it close to the edge because I want to be able to um, take this apart if I need to uh, to ever replace it. So. Um, I would prefer if it wasn't glued together, but we'll see how well it fits. So now I'm going to take the bottom piece of protective paper off of the solar filter and place it onto the ring. Okay, so what I've actually found is that the plastic protective paper on the back doesn't seem to want to come off too easily. So what I've decided to do is just hold it by the very edge, which is fine because that's not going to um, cause any problems and actually just gently coax off the protective layer. And then I can place the uh, solar filter paper down uh, without the um, protective layers. I think this is also a good idea because if I had put it down, there's probably a possibility that the glue might have made it impossible to take the protective film off. So it looks like happy accident. So I ended up using a scalpel knife, which ended up being quite easy actually just to uh, get in between the two sheets. It seems to be just be static that holds it together. So uh, once I was able to just get a start on it, it came off pretty quickly and easily. So I'm now just going to transfer the filter paper onto the uh, outer ring. All right, and there we go. And I have put no pressure on it whatsoever and um, it looks like it looks like it's holding its own i might apply just a small bit of pressure around the edges just to make sure that it's made contact
Okay, so the glue seems to have set a bit. There's a small bit of leakage around the sides here, but I'm not too worried about that because obviously being a solar filter, that's not going to affect the views. The last part then is the inner ring needs to go into the outer ring. And I'm just going to gently, gently push this down until it makes contact. Okay, so while the glue is drying on that one, I'm actually going to try it without glue um, because the actual parts themselves um, clip um, so you know tightly and nicely together. I'm thinking probably glue isn't even required, which would just be one less step that you need to do. I have this one cut out and I'm just going to uh, pop it in, no glue, and see what happens. So that one just sits in with no glue whatsoever and I'm going to put the inner ring on top of it. Clip it down, perfect. Um, who needs glue? Okay, so I think this is the way to go um, because you don't have any uh, messy glue coming out on the edge. Um, it's not going to fall out um, and you can repair this by cutting out a new sheet if needed. Uh, so yeah, probably the best way to go is without glue. There you go. That's how you make a DIY solar filter with batter solar film and a 3D printed solar cell. Okay, so what's left to do is to try out the Seastar solar filter first and then the DIY batter solar filter and we'll compare and contrast as they say and see how uh, they perform. I'm actually going to start with the batter filter first just because I'm curious to see how that's going to turn out. Um, so in the Seastar app, I'm going to keep the process uh, exactly the same between the batter filter and the Seastar filter, which is just basically using fully automatic settings in raw video and to capture one minute video and then stack it and see what the result is. I'm not going to do any post-processing at all, literally just a little bit of tweaking within the uh, Seastar processing app itself. Um, just to see what kind of details that we can tease out. So after it's successfully stacked, you can click on edit on the top right. And what this will do then will allow you to be able to change certain things like the brightness, uh, the saturation, um, and even the sharpness as well. So after a quick zoom around to see uh, it's stacked correctly, I can open that and I'm first going to go to the um, sharpen um, function and I'm going to increase the sharpening level just a small bit just to see what details can be teased out and again I'm going to try and keep the exact same settings between uh, this capture and then the capture later on uh, using the C star solar filter itself so once I'm happy pretty much with the um, result I'm then just going to save it down and then we can put the two images side by side at the end and then see uh, which ones we prefer. So I'm happy with this right now and I'm going to hit on done and that's just going to save it down onto the um, album on the Seastar um, app. Then next up is the Seastar solar filter itself and again going to use exactly the same settings. Um, I'm going to hit on autofocus uh, each time just to make sure that we're 100% um, in focus after moving the solar filters off and on. And again, just going to do a one minute uh, recording, which will capture plenty of frames, hopefully, to be able to stack and see what we can um, garnish from, from those. So again, uh, sped all of this up so that we could uh, get through it pretty quickly. Um, you can see the lovely, I did say yellow, but it's more of an orange color um, that's provided by the filter. Now, some people really like this. I'm not a huge fan of this kind of false color. Uh, sometimes I do add, um, 
you know, a, a, a color filter in Photoshop on some of the images um, just because um, it's more of an artistic thing rather than anything else, um, just easy on the eye. And I think we kind of expect that color from the sun. So it just makes it a bit more pleasing to look at. But the problem that I find is that sometimes the really finer details um, seem to get kind of lost. So I prefer um, just the white light image um, so that you can actually tease out as much of the um, detail as possible because as far as I'm concerned, that's what really it's all about. And it's very important when you're trying to capture uh, the very fine detail around sunspots, and especially if you're trying to capture something like the ISS um, passing in front of the sun, you want to have as much clarity as possible. So again, image has been saved down. And on the left hand side, we can now see the results of the DIY filter. And on the right hand side, the results from the filter that comes with the C-Star. I've got my favorite. Um, I'm not going to say which one it is, but if you've got a favorite, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, clear skies, and keep looking up.